Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. So this is going to be me going over stuff again from the Gundam community that appears on Twitter. Whether it be memes, kits, images, just stuff that I find genuinely uh, fun, amusing, or really neat. And we go over it and show it off to people. So starting out, we've got some crossbone art. Obviously, big fan of crossbone, so this user account up here always does really good crossbone art. Today we've got the... Uh, one armed i think that's the uh x1 with, with remnants of the uh the full cloth f f on it though that looks really nice absolutely love that still waiting for the uh the, uh, the manga to be adapted to anime form i'm probably gonna be waiting forever for that but until then until then these images can tide me off from this user so yeah anyway next one because we've got to get through so much stuff here i've got so many freaking uh things going on here apparently this user turns around and says that uh this was the only frame in the intro i think it was the intro for uh, gundam double o in which they show off a girl that isn't um the uh, the main uh female protagonist that sedson is supposed to save at the end of double uh, o but apparently it's the female representation of x here and apparently that's been confirmed i don't know like, if I've heard, like, that outside of Twitter, whether it's been confirmed or not, but it was really weird to see that. You know, it's... It brings up a, a good question about this character, considering her design does not match the uh, the actual female protagonist. I can't remember what her name was now. It's been a while so, since I watched Double O. Somebody in the comments can, uh, can correct me on all this. It's just really weird that somebody uh, has called this out and then apparently confirmed it as the, the first female personification of a Gundam. Then, of course, we've got this uh, kit here, which is a, uh, a highly modified lupus by the looks of it. And uh, this is by uh, Soyu0069. That one, that one looks crazy. I love it when people kit bash more than one kit together to, to get sort of the same uh, silhouette going here and just a slightly different look. So what we have is this really mutated looking uh, lupus. You can see it's using what looks like first form uh, lower leg sections for kneecaps there. We got all these crazy, uh, I think those are the, the Hashimal mobile armor uh, bits for the, the claws. They got bits of leg to, to make up for the giant arms there. It might even be the Lupus Rex thinking about it because of the tail now. It's just because these parts aren't blue. They don't match up with the, uh, the normal Lupus Rex. It kind of throws me a little bit. But I do love the uh, the detail put into that. Always love stuff like that. Almost looks like the mobile angel armor. Yeah, yeah. And then we got um, this uh, dual deep arms completed by uh, Quagga0906. Uh, and I, to be honest, I don't think I've ever seen the uh, the dual from Seed have the, uh, the deep arms. So uh, this is just me finding something new. And enjoying it. it looks really nice I really like how they've cleaned up the kit let's see about the other shots down here apparently it'll be in display or on display sorry in the Tsukushin store for a gunpla contest I assume that's in Japan but I just like the way that this looks it's completely different to all the other sort of designs you see for the duel like I think those are the assault shroud legs it's still got there I could be wrong looks like the assault shroud legs and shoulder parts and then obviously these guns that are on uh, different joints are, uh, are really cool and give it a different silhouette. And then on to the next one. i got to load so much stuff here. So here we've got uh, the uh, somebody posted up some damaged art from Gundam Wing. And uh, yeah, i got a soft spot for Gundam Wing. I've already said that in previous streams. It's kind of a little bit of nostalgia, but I also... Kind of look back on it a little bit and go what the hell was i thinking because of uh how some of the characters interact with each other it's just really weird uh but nostalgia going all crazy here we've got the uh, the tall geese all damaged here followed with the epion which has its arm taken off i think that's correct if you look at the uh, the final fight it does have the uh, the heat rod arm removed by the wing zero so that's pretty cool then we've got Death Scythe Hell. Really cool TV design. 
Never seen that in kit form. Still praying for it after we get the uh, the uh, HG Death Scythe. I think it's this year or next year. I absolutely love all these like different details that we can see on the inside, like the inner frame. We've got the uh, the shoulder here, the vents, uh, little bits of the uh, the skirt armor, which is a little bit off screen, but this is done by uh, uh, at Vicky thirty three. I won't flick through these too fast, just so you guys can see the uh, the actual user up here. This helmet looks very Russian, says John. Which one? The, uh, the Death Scythe? It's, the comment's been hidden. I'm going to have to uh, unhide that in a bit. The Death Scythe one is uh, based on a Japanese helmet, if I remember rightly. And then, of course, we've got Wing Zero at the end, which looks really cool, because it's got the, uh, the inner frame where its eye is exposed. We've got the, uh, the Vulcan on the the top of the chest one of the arms is missing it just i love the overall detail in this stuff apparently it's from the blu-ray box <laughs> according to the uh the upper section here i don't know whatever it's really cool i love the artwork it's so detailed now we've got from ea gunpla we've got some more uh Eurovan pictures from uh, re-rise this is done in a slightly different color scheme and it looks like it's even had uh, some more custom work done to it in terms of panel lines, separating things. Honestly, this just looks clean. This looks so clean. Uh, I'm not sure, John. But yeah, I, I love how this, this looks. I know the, uh, the original design has more of a dark look to it. You know, it's sort of a dark color scheme. But I, I love... How clean and, uh, and nice this looks. All the, the lines are very crisp and stand out. Uh, I love the amount of work that's been put in to get it to look like this. So good. Then here we've got uh, G, uh, G Yamamoto again. This time instead of uh, the, the re-rise art like I showed off before. This one is uh, from... taking a drink at the same time here this is from the ms8 team this is the ground gundam with uh, one of its arms missing so good especially because the uh, the rainy atmosphere but i absolutely love the, the detail we can see on the uh, the actual frame as well where we can see the the rain that's bouncing off the armor as well and uh, giving it that extra physicality you know that feel that it's, it's actually there and existing so the rain's bouncing off it it looks so nice it's not too damaged up. There's like little bits of dents in the armor here and there, but sometimes when you, you go over like eighth team artwork, you'll see the, the suits are all beaten up and like coated in mud and things like that. So this isn't so much that, it's more just sort of one of the arms has got damaged in a battle. Either way, it looks nice and clean for artwork. I absolutely love it. Love the atmosphere that it gives off. Here's one as well from... Uh, or at least retweeted from Art Station at uh, uh, Sbird995. This is the unicorn. I'm not too sure what the background's meant to be. I'm assuming this is just a custom. But I, uh, I do like the style of the artwork here. It's not so much going in on the, uh, the panel lines and details as much as it is just blocking out shapes. And using colors to, uh, to really make things pop. So it's more of a simple sort of art style until you get to the, uh, the details on the background. But yeah, I do love the uh, the unicorn in destroy mode, and this is just really nice to see it, especially because it looks like they've tweaked the scale a little bit, because this this person here looks really tiny compared to the unicorn in the background. Next, we've got a, uh, a couple of shots from uh, Kevin two three seven nine two eight nine five, and this is of the uh, the cross silhouette and um, ground Gundam and the Zaku. And uh, it's a good kit. I still need to finish it, but I absolutely love these shots, especially with the uh, the, ba the background sort of mini diorama thing going on. <laughs> I like the way they've edited the mono eye there as well. It's a really nice kit. If you're looking for SDs or just something that's uh, that's really fun to do and isn't too much of a hassle, and you like the uh, the MSA team, then yeah, the uh, the ground Gundam is a, a really good kit. Next, we got some other stuff by uh, Gajimaru810, and this is this is cool. I, I didn't see much Efreet stuff before in terms of like customs, and I think we've got Efreets and Zakus in this one. People were saying on the last video that there wasn't enough uh, enough Zeon stuff, 
but this is just a case of me going over things as I find it on Twitter and then saving it and putting it together at the end of the week. So, uh, last week they just didn't tweet too much uh, Zeke stuff. Here we've got a, a gun cannon here with all these little uh, decals on the back. I love it when people have decals. It's just a case of not going too overboard with them. Which Katoki's notorious for. The, uh, the Efreets here, I absolutely love them just because... One, there's three of them, so it's actually made up of a group. And then the other little details that make them look a little bit like Zaku's, like the shoulder shields that are changed out instead of the classic ones. And uh, obviously no rocket pods on the legs, but yeah, I'm really loving that. They look, again, nice and clean, nice decal work. Be interesting to see what they look like with a bit of weathering on them, but either way, I really do love the the way that these came out. And then they've got some Zaku's to uh, to go along with them as well. Really love it when people like put a load of time and effort into the builds, even if like say for instance, even if they don't do weathering, which tends to give it a little bit more of a a realistic feel. Even if they just go for a clean look, as long as you can you can see they've put the effort in and it looks real good. I absolutely love that. Appreciate the effort that goes into these. Then I got some artwork again. This is I uh, Haguma Karasu, and this is uh, SD artwork. Some of this just looks real nice. It's like SD Musha stuff. I think that's supposed to be the new based on the uh, the wings. The It's a bit more stylized, but I really do like this. There's the night gun then. Still waiting for his HG. I'll probably be waiting forever for that. But I do like the uh, the damage here and the emotion that it's showing. You can get away with that because they're SDs compared to the normal. It's a really nice shot, that, though. Then here we've got uh, Savan, Savan, and this is more da what they call damage fetish stuff this must have been a week where they just posted a load of battle damage suits this is obviously the new gundam with uh some damage on like it's torso you've got little uh dints in the the top of the armor here where it looks like it's either had shrapnel or um bits of debris banging around on it while it's been flying around again clean artwork shading's real nice on it can't fault it. Looks really, really nice. Absolutely loving these battle damage suits. And then we've got the, uh, I think this is the G3. Based on the colors, we got that shield with uh, what looks like a beam saber damage. <coughs> Excuse me. We got this nice glow going on the head cameras. The background's pretty colorful. But yeah, overall, loving the details again like the contrast between the two uh, images where one is really dark and then the other is really light and vibrant contrast between both of them is really good then here we've got uh, M. Jehati puts up uh, what looks like the strike but in classic Gundam colours making it a little bit more accurate looks like it might be slightly edited in terms of the uh, the design Either way, I like the way that looks. And then we've got other more uh, classic variants of uh, seed suits by the look of it. We've got what looks like a, a normal gym here, in, but in seed stylings. And then we've got what looks like the Alex as well. This, this one, the funny thing is, this actually doesn't look too bad. Like, most of the, the seed designs were pretty nice anyway. They were just like the odd couple that were a bit weird. But overall, I really like these as uh, like updates of the classic suits. If only Seed had, uh, had been a little bit more like classic Gundam. I think people probably would have enjoyed it a little bit better. Either way, I'm loving like these tiny details, like the small accents at the side of the uh, the head here, just highlighted in blue. I don't think that's on the uh, the actual original Alex. And then we've obviously got the uh, the covers for the Vulcans, the wrist-mounted Vulcans there. And then the, the only thing they've done at the bottom here is just fill out the legs a little bit at the side. I really do like the uh, the design for the strike, though. It picks out certain areas with a little bit more detail. So good. 
Hey Lumis, nice to see you in chat. And on top of this, we've got more work from kids. This is uh, Altair 1017. This is, I think it's the BD1. What isn't on the Alexis, John? The uh, the blue accent around the side of the head. But yeah, this is the, the BD1. Again, this is another kit done by somebody looking real nice. Got a load of uh, different deca uh, decals over it. I don't know whether it's a HG or not. Absolutely loving the uh, the work that's been on done on this. We got extra uh, detailing that's been done here and there by the looks of it, like custom stuff, panel lines, uh, extra panels that have been cut out and then molded in plat plate. Uh, different things like the uh, the side mounts here on the shoulders and the the side of the head. They're picked apart in different colours. Just makes everything pop. Really like that. And then we've got a pale rider. Or one of the Pale Rider variants. This is the... I believe this is the ground type based on the cannon on the back. My favourite. And uh, again, extra panel lines, extra details on it. I'm assuming this is the high grade. Different colours to make it pop again. Currently in Hades by the look of it. Oh, the Hades system's active because of the, uh, the visor. This looks uh, really really nice I, again i love it when people take the time to do custom detailing and make it look really really nice so uh seeing something like this where there's tons of custom detailing and work put into it you can uh, you can definitely appreciate the effort that somebody puts in to make this look as good as it does now we've got this is the the gym gym here from uh, uh bill fighters gym's counter attack i think it was the uh the small OVA. This is uh, I, I like the the silhouette of the Jim Jim. How it stays really close to the original Jim. The only thing that I'm not too like too much in love with on this one is the amount of decals. Like this is absolutely plastered in decals. Um, apart from that, again another clean build. You're streaming this now, since Shinju. I I was gonna upload this this morning but with everything that's gone on today i, I thought I'd, i can't miss out on content so i thought i'd stream this for everybody instead so yeah we got some extra detailing here little bits here and there it tends to be a common thing with extra details um where the uh they do like tiny bits of plow plate and then cut them out and put them on and sand them in just to make everything stand out a little bit more it's it's a really simple idea to make things pop just that little bit more. It's surprisingly effective if you do it like very minimalistically. And then, I'm assuming this one is just a custom because that is not a Gundam. Here we go. Then we got the the real grade heavy weapon system, but it's in uh, full armor double zeta colors. I think it's the mass produced. Double Zeta colors. Because it looks like the, the most recent Master Grade. But yeah, I love the, uh, the the way that the real grade new looks. I'm just, I'm not so sure with the uh, the heavy weapons pack. I actually like the idea of it having, not the asymmetry, but the, the fin funnels on both shoulders. To kind of bulk it out and give it wings. But yeah, the... Um, just the the real grade new on its own here looks absolutely amazing. I still want to get it. I still want to get it because uh, I'm not going to real grade in ages. And this just looks, again, I'm going to be repeating myself a lot. But uh, it looks clean. It's nice and crisp with the uh, the way that all the, the details stand out from each other. You can see the panel lines really easily. They don't look like they're clogged up with paint or whatever. It looks like a lot of time and effort has gone into finishing this. Picking out little details in like gold and things like that. Absolutely fantastic. Love it. We got a lot of stuff to get through today. Last one of these took like an hour to do. I think it was a half an hour. This is done by uh, DA01220329. All these crazy usernames. This is what Nugs posted up the other day. I think he saw the same thing as I did. But this is a, uh, a unicorn in uh, destroy mode the difference is that this is actually painted to look like it's straight out of the anime we can't get really many close-ups here but you can see it against the actual 
uh, background here. They've matched it as closely as possible. Absolutely love how people learn to do this. This is like on a whole nother level in terms of painting something up to uh, to look like almost exactly like the line art. It's going to take a lot of time and patience to do something like that. Plus, obviously, matching up the colors as, as accurately as possible. It's just amazing being able to see something that actually looks like the line art, but in 3D. There are a couple of, pe of people that I know that do this. I think one of them is a, uh, a woman that streams it on YouTube a couple of times. So she's really good at it. Then we've got another one similar. This is by uh, Susania, I think this is. Uh, X-Zero. And this is some of her previous work. This is the, uh, the new Gundam. The real grade. And this is done... In a, a very similar manner, she's made it look like it's artwork, you know, line art. A little bit more cell shaded, as you can see around the legs, it kind of stands out. But then she's also added the fin funnels going off in different directions with effect parts. So nice. So nice. Absolutely loving this. I love the way in the comments section to the side, which you guys can't see, there's people posting like nosebleed uh, emotes because it looks so good. Then here we've got what would happen if you took the, the Gustav Karl and you turned it into a gun cannon or give it gun cannon colours. Absolutely love this one. Like sometimes uh, it's it's neat just to see another more advanced suit that's like further down the, the timeline be given the like classic colours. Absolutely love this. Absolutely love this. It's really big and bulky for design, but just in the uh, the gun cannon colors, it looks fantastic. Hey, Zero and chat. How you doing? But this one is... Oh, God. This username. So, uh, I, I can't pronounce this. I'm going to have to to get some of these usernames later on and post them in the description like I did with the first one. So this one's courtesy of Gunpla Photos. Absolutely love looking at Gunpla Photos page. Because normally I have some really good stuff. This is uh, Barbatos, I think. I think this is either... I think this might be fourth form, based on the shoulders. And then uh, what well, looks like one of the core Gundams. I'm not entirely sure which one, though. It might be the uh, the uh, 3. Actually, I'm wrong. It looks like the, uh, the V2 head there. And they've got um, some battle damage going on here, or at least some wear and tear. It looks real nice. Um, absolutely love the scratching all over this. The different colours, I'm not too sure on primarily because I like the, the classic colours for the most part on uh, on re-rise suits. But in, in this case, the, the sort of the gold and, and black and orange match each other really, really well. Really like that silhouette. It looks like one of the eyes has been... Uh, gouged out as well it just looks like here where the mouse is like there's some battle damage on the side of the head let's see if we can see that in another picture oh you can't because of that being faced the other way god damn but yeah again this is a case of and i said i was i was going to be repeating myself a lot it's another clean build in terms of the way that it looks overall i like the damage because unlike some of the other stuff where it's it's more cleaner or it looks more like the line art this actually looks like it's been through some actual battles and stuff it was really really nice weathering is something that's uh people claim that it's a, a little bit easy to do depending on uh, you know who you talk to but weathering is uh is one of those things where you can get wrong so easily especially if you go too heavy with the paint you gotta kind of take it easy and really take your time with it when you're doing the dry brushing and stuff rather than just going over it like haphazardly and uh and making a mess i love this looks so good and then here again we've got um some more chibi stuff this is retweeted by uh, 39 bow by the look of it and uh this is chibi gundam stuff uh, not all of them will be on screen uh, we're missing the crossbone stuff along the bottom here that you can't actually see because of how I've edited this to uh, to appear on screen. But of course we've got the uh, the Chibi uh, original gun cast across the top. Then we've got the, there's the EZ8. We got everything uh, from the uh, the OVAs by the look of it. So we got the uh, 
MSA's team. We've got War in the Pocket. We've got uh, a Zuda there, I believe. Then Thunderbolt. And then uh, Stardust Memory. And then we got Zeta here. Charles Counterattack. Uh, Unicorn. And then uh, we're getting into Narrative at the bottom. And then as we go along the bottom row, which you guys can't see, there's uh, Crossbone, F91, Victory, and... Uh, unfortunately uh, G Savior in the bottom right and then uh, when we switch it up here when we switch it up here we've got uh, some of the other stuff here so we've got some of the AUs we've got G Gundam along the top here I love that the master Gundam looks looks crazy his, his head is so wide because of those weird horns but then we've got wing uh, I don't know is that G unit on the top right there's like endless waltz it's wing TV Endless Waltz, what I'm assuming is G-Unit, then X, uh, Turn A, Seed, uh, Seed Astray, Seed Destiny, Stargazer, Double O, uh, Season 1, 2 in the, the movie, Age, and IBO in the, the bottom right here, and then what you don't see along the bottom again is um, Reconquista G, Beginning G, and then the Build Series which goes up until re-rise it's g unit yeah i was just making sure because uh g unit is one of those ones i'm not familiar with again then we got another one from uh gumpla photos and this is uh this is one of the uh the sd kits i just love how uh this was done this is pars sd kit if i remember rightly and uh, it's dragon form i love the way this is done making him look like he's flying across water or whatever it's not like there's uh, so much done to the kit by the look of it. It's not so much a straight build. It has been cleaned up, but there's no extra paint on it by the looks of it. It's all applied pretty uh, neat, but I do like the uh, the extra effects to make it look as though it's flying around in an actual scene. So nice. Then here we got Master Grade Babato 6 form, but this is uh, in different colors. Again, I'm, I'm going to be saying this. I said uh, it like two or three times already clean build oh my god absolutely love how this has come out the the different colors how pristine this looks there's there's practically no imperfections in the paint job or anything that i can see just straight out the gate here i love the uh, the way that they've done the pistons and the hydraulics here um i love how there's these very small decals and the tech down logos all over the place this uh, looks like it's cleaned up real nice. Then we've got a, uh, a standing version of it. The uh, the dark color scheme actually works really well with six form. And then here, there you got the front and the back. We've got what looks like fuel tanks that have been added to the back, and a uh, another thruster on the uh, the skirt. That's interesting. There's an additional thing. And then you've got the uh, the waist boosters the additional waist boosters that i think they took off a of graze if i remember rightly from the show and then uh, is it standing again but what you can't see is the wrench mace at the, at the bottom here the wrench mace is done in like this really nice metallic colors looks so looks so nice then uh, this is by bluefin brands and this is actually showing off the uh one of the sd gundam world heroes kids i just like the the cg for this the way that it looks this is the uh, the Sasuke Delta Gundam. The Delta Gundam doesn't really get too much loving from what I uh, I know here, but I love the the design for this. I love the the what looks like Kabuki mask here, and then we have got the claws on the sides. Got these uh, flaming decals going all the way down. I really do like this. Looks really nice in its CG. You just know it's going to take loads of effort to make it look this good. That's the only problem with SDs. Like, they're a bit hit and miss with whether they'll come out good or whether you'll actually put a lot of effort into them. Either way, I prefer the uh, the Musha-styled ones to the uh, the Chinese ones that have come out recently. The, the Chinese ones are really weird with the like the extra her parts and things, whereas I just prefer the Musha stuff that's more sort of traditional Japanese armor and, and uh, things like that. But yeah, this looks like one I'll pick up. It, it looks like a really nice design. I just, I think I'm going to do what I normally do with SDs first on most kids, which is wait, look at somebody's review and then turn around and make my decision based on how many stickers it's going to have. Because it looks like it's going to have a lot. Um, this one is from 
uh, Ichi Sosuke bot, I think. This is the uh, the Master Grade Dreadnought Gundam from, I think, Seed. Hey, Exram. Be nice somebody trying to do tequila Gundam. I think I've seen that somewhere. So, uh, you know, this one, this one, again. I think this is from Seed. Not entirely sure about the Dreadnought Gundam. I've seen it a couple of times in uh, in people's videos and stuff, but I don't know too much about it. I like the way that this kit looks. All the details look really nice on it. You get a close up here. The Forerunner of the Providence, says Shinju. Ah, okay, okay. So we got these, uh, I think in uh, Seed the Dragoons. I like the, the design for the head there. That looks real nice. That looks almost like the uh, the Freedom's torso there with some weird bit coming out the front there. I'm not quite sure what that is. I don't know whether this is a custom or a third party or what. It doesn't actually say. I do like the color scheme though on it. I like the shield reminds me of uh, Wing Gundam's shield from C. Uh, not C from Wing. <laughs> what the hell was I on then? Is it using the Freedom Master Grade as a base? I'm not entirely sure. Uh, let's see if it says it. Translate tweet. Uh, it doesn't actually say. It doesn't actually say, unfortunately. But yeah, I uh, really, really like this. It looks like a really nice design. I don't want to just keep saying this looks clean and nice and stuff like that because I'm repeating myself. Uh, this is apparently by... Uh, Spectrif, yeah, Spectruing, and uh, this is the uh, Zeta Gundam Define, and uh, this looks so good. <laughs> Again, how uh, how pristine this looks, like other ways of saying this just looks really good, you know. I love, again, the amount of effort that goes into making stuff clean up really nice, because when you first get kicked, the... Uh, you know, the colours are obviously completely, uh, well, not completely show accurate, so you've got to fix them up, depending on what kit you're working on, especially with high grades, they have problems, some of them have major sticker problems, some people go ahead and just repaint the entire kit, and this looks like a case of repainting the entire kit, I could be wrong, but just the, uh, the colours look a little bit better than just your standard sort of, like, dark blue that you would get on plastic, but I love the way they've picked out all the, the panel line details here on the legs and everything. Honestly, compared to some of the other Zeta uh, builds that I've seen, this easily looks like one of the better ones. A beam mega launch is smart gun. I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. It doesn't really say. I just, I like the way this has come out. The overall look of it looks really, really nice. And we get a close up here. The uh, the torso seems to be a little bit more uh, rounded rather than uh, sort of blocky like the normal Zeta. It's interesting that. Interesting design. It's, it must be like a, an alternative design or something or a complete custom. I don't know. I'm going to have to go and look at that that person's uh, Twitter and see. Because a lot of the... The design bits, like the vents here. The vents have more shape in them than they would normally. It's a, it's a really interesting one, that one. Then we've got the Gym Dominance. This one's done by, uh, at Gundam Sentinel. I looked at this one, well, I took one look and thought, oh my god, this looks great because the panel line work on it. And also because it's uh, a Fetty suit. <laughs> no, I absolutely love those Fetty suits. And because it's got the, the dual beam rifle. On the, uh, the arm here. So we've got like one shield here. The dual beam rifle. What looks like custom pa uh, panels. I could be wrong about that. Uh, minor deck I'll work. I say that and then I'm noticing small ones all over. Overall again. People, people really do put a lot of effort into cleaning up the builds here. Because all of these paint jobs look absolutely fantastic. Does it T-pose, though? <laughs> oh, I think the uh, the Zeta stuff, the previous Zeta kit that we saw, that does transform, because uh, there were shots of it in the comments further down below that showed it in Wave Rider form. Or at least it looked like it. 
So you choose the feds over Zeke's. Yeah, I think I've mentioned this before, but you, you stick a Gundam head on anything and I'll just go for it. I'm really stupid in that. Here's uh, Naokiti0605. I think I might have pronounced that wrong, but this is the, the perfect grade Gundam. There's something about having a kit just done and over in uh, you know, like primer so that it's all one color and then done like extra panel lines and work on it even if it is a perfect grade i'm not entirely sure whether those details are on the new perfect grade but either way it's nice seeing something in in just primer i think it maybe that's because i've done 3d modeling for years and until you apply textures you just see everything in gray but um there's something so simplistic about having it in sort of a monotone and being able to pick out all the little details without having to look too hard i don't know gray's gray's just a a really nice color to uh to look at something while it's in progress and uh, be able to admire all these little details without having to sort of squint or look around in the individual colors and try and make things out it's it's easier as a monotone color to make out the details i love the way they've only really picked out the the head camera and the eyes that seem to be lit up by the led unit maybe the the pistons on the neck there and the the vulcans on the head that looks really nice even though it's a work in progress and then we've got another shot of it from the side where it looks like they've got the interior of the vents lit up as well let's see what else we got going on we got some extra work on the uh, the side of the, it looks like they've, they've got the beam sabers the torso and the head done at the moment they've not done much more I actually like the way they got the thruster bells in metallic blue though. Those must be custom ones. Like I was saying, with it being grey, I just love the way that you can see all these details. Really nice. This is a G3 model, says Victor Primus. I'm not entirely sure this this is detailed as the uh, just the perfect grade Gundam, so it might be that somebody's trying to do it in G3 colours. Let's move on here. So this one is by uh, Saberunzu, I think, 8989. Hope I pronounced that right. Probably haven't. This is the Zuda Kai. Don't see too many Zuda units or Zuda uh, kits. This one looks a little bit bulky. I'm not sure whether the, uh, the way that it's done, whether the uh, scaling is correct compared to like in-game models from GBO2. Either way, I like the way that we've got like this weathering on it just a very faint hint of weathering it's not got its anti-ship rifle which is something i'm a bit sad about but overall looks really nice looks like extra boosters strapped to the uh, the sides zaku warrior leg says eggs ram there's a metal out of the box says john oh nice but yeah this was the Zuda. This looks real nice. Again, I'm going to be saying that a lot. I, I, Again, this is all stuff that I find on Twitter and just go, ooh, neat. Catches my attention, you know. I think about throwing it up. So most of this I'm going to be repeating myself, saying looks nice, looks clean, looks crisp, or I like the weathering on this. Not much else unless something like really fantastic stands out. G Room 44 or 34 puts up this uh, high-grade Messer, but this is a custom one. From what I can tell, I'm, I'm not familiar with the Mesa, so from what I can tell from reviews, it's normally like a red and, uh, or sort of like a pinkish colour scheme, and instead they've done it over in what looks like Zaku colours, but they've split it up, they've done a lot of uh, colour separation here, and they've done a lot of extra panel line work by the looks of it, and then added some decals on top. It's a lot of work to get it to look like that. Really, really like how this come out, compared to the... Uh, the original it does definitely remind me more of a zaku now than uh, the uh, the original color scheme i'm not sure if there's any actual uh, additional plot plate being used on that you know for any uh, details I, I love again how the uh, the details are picked out here and how even though there are a lot of uh, decals on it because they're all tiny it kind of blends in when you're just looking at it from a distance. It looks like a Fetty Anazion suit, says Shinju. Yeah, it's a, it's a weird one. A really weird one. I don't know how to uh, to go about describing it any other way. We've got like the uh, 
the remnants of, say, like the the Zaku shoulder, the uh, the lower elbow looks like it's part of a Zaku. The skirt, I'm not too sure about. The legs definitely look like they're from a Zaku. The feet, I'm not too sure. They look more. Eh, I was gonna say more like a Gundams, but then you look at them and they're pretty wide, like a Zaku's. Head unit has that weird piping that Azaku has. This shoulder though, this shoulder looks more fatty because of the vent there and the uh, the angular design on it. Plus the upper arms look a bit more fatty and the vents there, so it's it's a really weird one. You think the Titans would use it? Yeah, yeah. Then we've got um, AKT-01X, this, this one I clicked primarily because you don't see uh, many customs of build diver stuff, especially when they go and make the characters into their actual normal outfits. So this is a, a custom of uh, a army with a schoolgirl outfit on. Pretty neat. Actually like that. We got a, a couple of them that have been done because we got what was it, the high grade of uh, Fumina in a normal outfit recently, uh, and there's people that have done May in a her outfit from uh, Rerise. Uh, a dress that she goes out in either way i like the customs like that because it, it obviously takes a little bit more effort to make them look accurate and obviously make them look as if they're wearing like proper clothes instead of the uh their actual build divers gear really neat that and then we've got shield effects and uh other effects here that look like they're done in plastic by uh, anubis i think that is this is uh, the victory. What well, looks like it's shield kind of breaking here, but we've got the uh, the shield bits breaking off and forming that beam shield, and then we've got it doing the uh, the uh, wings of light and the uh, the bit in the angel halo, I think it is, where the are used to uh, deflect attacks, and then the entire thing splits apart. I love this the way that they pose that. I I don't know how they do custom uh, effects like this. I'm assuming it's all like custom. Uh, plastic that they use but um they look really nice that one i think is a uh, a recon gista g suit only because i don't recognize it <laughs> like normally if i don't recognize stuff that looks really weird it's it's from a, a series that i've not seen or that i'm only just familiar with because of the actual kits and not the, the series itself so yeah i'm sure i've seen this from like r the recon gista g line but it looks like there's a little bit more detail put into it than the shield bits on the uh, the right hand side here but again this is by uh, at Anubisin really really nice shots again these look like custom effect parts I really like it when people take the time to do something like this I think what they've done to, to get the energy looking effect coming from these sides is just scratch into the plastic you know, to get these kind of like uh, lightning looking effects actually really uh, really neat if it's done like that and then they've like faded the the paintwork in it looks like see-through plastic that they've painted around with either a an airbrush or a rattle can with pink and just lightly dusted the edges of it i could be totally wrong on that it's just how i would do it that's a mix of recon gista suit the g recon gista suits says shinju that's kimaris as proof no 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 that ain't kimaris that ain't Kimaris. Uh, that, the, the shoulders, or the, the binder looking things on the shoulders, those are from a Recongista G suit, definitely. None of this looks like it's from IBO. Um, I'd be able to tell you that in a heartbeat. Uh, it's definitely Recongista G. I'm just going to have to look it up later and then post it in chat. Here we've got um, by uh, Tomato. Uh, the yeah, tomato knit we've got the the crossbone gundam x3 this is uh the full cloth version it's uh it's so nice <laughs> they've, they've what looks like they've done custom leds throughout it and then ran a wire up the uh the main uh action base but i, I don't know whether this is a high grade or not let me open up the open it up here we've got um what looks like custom lighting running around the back as well to illuminate the uh, the full cloth. But this looks fantastic. I absolutely love the uh, the posing and the lighting on it. And then of course we've got the uh, 
the full cloth completely closed there. It looks like there's some custom parts on the back. Do we, do we get a shot of that? No. Okay, so for some strange reason, it's got uh, what looks like the double O Gundam or the XCS Seven Swords weapons. It looks like they've got the the Seven Swords small dagger blades on the the back here, and then we've got the the two GN swords. I think it is. I could be wrong. Actually, those might be from uh, the the double O Diver from Build Divers because of the the parts on the end and then they've got what looks like custom parts going along the outside that make the blades look bigger huh either way i absolutely love the the lighting on this as in like the custom lighting they've done and ran it through the action base it's a really neat idea i still want to mess around with stuff like that in future doing like kits that have got lights in them crossbone sounds odd well jupiter empire is screwed says shinju absolutely love crossbone so good. Just wish it get animated. Again, here we've got some more stuff from Among Us. This is a Kosu uh, Kaisetsu. By the look of it, I probably pronounced that wrong. But this is the the new and the uh, Sazabi here, I think. I think I've zoomed in too much there. Yeah, it's the new and the Sazabi. <laughs> looks like those are the, uh, the, the bits are meant to be the followers. And then you've just got the... Uh, looks like custom skins. I love when people do... Uh, do this kind of a what if scenario for if this actually ever got in the game. There we go. This is uh, by uh, Who You Odd. And this looks like it's a unicorn variant. Doesn't say anything else. Let's let's have a look here. We got a load of. It says Peacock on here. We've got a load of unicorn shields. How many is that? Five? Okay, so what's the deal with this? If you scrap, scrap the plot armor, who do you think would win between the, the Unicorn and the, the new? Ooh, I do not know, Anubis. Like, the Unicorn has all its crazy Psycho Frame abilities compared to the, uh, the new, which really didn't do too much of that. It only really used them for the funnels and then the, the pushing back of uh, Axis. I'm wondering what's going on here. This looks like a unicorn in destroy mode, but it's the the gray destroy mode when it's sort of like powered down. But all of the all of the shields are attached to each other with really weird, almost like custom joints that are then attached to the backpack. It's a really really weird design. The shields represent feathers of a bird, says Eggtram. It looks like it. There's nothing else in here, so I can't really get like a, a front shot or anything. Huh. Strange. Then uh, by Muchan TR909. This is the, uh, what looks like a command gym. I could be wrong. Looks like a command gym, but they've made it like a, sort of like a medical unit. I think I've seen one of these very similar in design, but it was from Seed. Um, but yeah, I love the uh, the little bit of custom detailing we've got here. Like for instance, we got the uh, the extrudes into the shoulder that, that give it a little bit more detail. And uh, for anyone who doesn't know what an extrude is, basically it's just cutting into the plastic to uh, to get this deep sort of channel look here. Then we've got the same with the backpack. It looks like a custom backpack. Could be wrong. It's got like a frog on it and a barcode. I. I I don't know what the barcode's about. Maybe it's just like a custom thing that the user put on it, just for the sake of it. We got some like nice. It looks like they've moved the uh, the backpack for the actual gym further down and on the waist to uh, to give it more thrust, and then uh, kept the uh, the actual backpack or the new backpack and put it on top. So it's got you know like a, a field medic backpack that looks really cool. But yeah, I love the uh, the little bit of custom detailing here for that. Really. Uh, Really cool variant that I think, like I said, I swear I've seen in Seed before. Here we go. This is by Black5777.5. And this is the uh, the Gym Sniper 2 done up. This is uh, this is an interesting one, this, because it's got a load of little details. Exram says, the backpack is a walk ahead from Star Wars. Oh my god, I didn't notice that. 
So the reason why I say this one's got a load of little details is because we've got a load of individual panels that look like they're custom done, a load of uh, different panel lines and obviously custom paint job. But the, uh, the guy that's done this has gone into so much attention to detail because they've even put like Picatinny rails on the top of the rifle that you have on like a normal gun or, or a normal rifle and then you just slide the scope onto it. I love the Picatinny rail system, especially even on the bottom there to attach a bipod to. Overall, this this just looks really, really good. I love the way they got the bullpup hanging off the back there as well. And then you can see the, the detailing on the thrusters. I don't know whether they're custom or not. You got these, uh, again, these little bits, which I'm assuming are plar plate custom done on the back. It deviates a little bit from the uh, the classic design, especially with the rifle. But I uh, I really like how this is done and how it's posed. Really, really nice work. And then here we've got what looks like Rav Rav 52, 52-1. This is the Sazabi. I'm not sure about that one. Uh, that's another Zeke suit. And then the Goof Custom. So we'll go through these in order. So the Sazabi here, I love how this is done with the gold. I know a lot of people say that gold looks tacky. Hey, Davizia. I know a lot of people say uh, gold looks tacky on some suits, but on the Sazabi here, it looks real nice. Really do like it. It comes out looking fantastic, looking regal. You've got all these reflections that are coming off it and highlighting different parts of the suit. If you were to hit those sections with some light, it'd be reflecting off everything and... Uh, and really shining on all these uh, little indents and panel lines and stuff all over it. I just feel like the red and the gold color scheme works really well together. I think this is the Master Grey, doesn't it? It looks like it because of all the different panels. Overall, the work that's gone into this just looks fantastic. Was that Full Functional's Gear Adoga? I think it might have been. Let's, let's go to it. So I'm not entirely sure because there's only a back shot. I think that's... Is that the, uh, the Neo Zeon... Or the uh, the sleeves logo. I could be wrong here. Like I said, I'm not familiar with Zeke stuff, so it's pretty awkward to to pick out. Let's see if, if I go back to the. I think that might be that might be Neo Zeon. I think. Looking at the uh, the logo there, I could be wrong. Uh, assumingly because of its color scheme, it's either Shars or it's full frontals. But there's only a reverse shot. Oh, it's a sleeves one as well, because I just noticed there. You can see the uh, the sleeves markings on the edges. Okay, so that's... It's got to be full frontals. But yeah, I, I love, again, the uh, the way that this has come out. I, f I feel like with a lot of this, people definitely airbrush these, because with cans, you get slightly thicker paint on it because of the way that you use the, the rattle can. So you can... You can try to go across it lighter from a distance, but the the way that the paint job comes out is kind of speckled. you got to kind of just get it right, and there's a lot of messing around with the, the range and the amount of spray that you apply to something. Maybe you apply it in multiple coats to, to get it look a little bit better, but I find that stuff with an airbrush seems to look really good anyway. Just more or less the same amount of effort put in. It's just you don't have to spend too much time messing around with the the range or anything it's more just applying the uh the coats very lightly to get this very crisp and clean look that i've been going on about this entire stream and then they go over it with like another color afterwards which in this case would be red and uh it keeps that sort of crisp look that i was on about when we were looking at the perfect grade before and i said like the the gray makes all the details pop and stand out seems like that's the way to go about stuff um, Blitzkrieg says, I wish I had a garage not full of stuff. Having space to airbrush would be amazing. Uh, getting an airbrush kit would really, uh, really elevate, like, just the, uh, the game for some people in terms of painting, because I think I've got an airbrush somewhere, I just can't find it. I just need to get back into using it again, because they are really nice. That's why I rely on rattle cans, mostly. Then we've got, um... Goof Custom here from 8th Team. Again, we've got some tiny details that are picked out here, especially on like the Gatling where we've got these uh, these gold accents. 
got what looks like a little bit of weather in here and there. Overall, pretty clean build. What looks like a gloss coat on it. I'm not so sure they've done anything to the, the knife here. To be honest, with knives and things, it's always nice to give them sort of like a silver edge so it stands out a little bit more, but that's just my personal preference. Either way, this one does, again, it looks real nice. I'm not so sure I'd like it that clean, though, if I did it myself. I'd probably put a little bit more weathering into it. Again, it's all preference, you know. We're not even near the end yet. I've, I've still got an absolute ton of tabs open here. But here's uh, by uh, Nagare Dot, I think this is. Or at Nagare Dot. I've probably pronounced that wrong. But this is a non-scale resin kit of the Quanta. The ELS Quanta. Like, this is this was a really weird suit, this, at the end of the, uh, the Double O movie. But um, the way that this has come out, like the the back here, if it's a resin kit, a lot of work has gone into uh, fading between colours here. You got blue, what looks like red or pink, white, then green. That looks real nice. I love gradient colour schemes like that, especially because it's done in metallics by the look of it. Here it is stood next to what looks like the uh, that's the lupus. I don't know whether that's a high grade or not that might be one to one hundred. Is that the full mechanics or? I don't know. I'm I'm not too sure about that now. I'm confused as to which lupus kit that is. If this is a, have I read this wrong and, and it's not the one to one hundred? Yeah, like the non-scale resin kit for the LS Quanta. So uh, this might be like a high grade. But yeah, the LS Quanta. It, I love this shot here just because of the lighting on it. So it's kind of weird the uh, the silhouette and shapes on it. I know it's meant to be like part alien. It definitely looks at. I don't know. I've never been too into the uh, the design of it just because of how strange it looks. But you don't see it too much at the end of the movie, so I suppose that's also the reason why you don't see much of it in kit form. The, here we go. This was uh, Susania. X zero from uh, before. Here's another one of her works. This is the uh, the Master Grade Quanta Full Saber, but done in uh, in her usual style. She's put it on a nice background, which is she's one of the people that does like the line art style uh, paint jobs on stuff. Again, looks really good. Looks almost exactly like it's out of the anime. Really, really, really like that. She puts a lot of work into uh, into her paint jobs and her detailing, and then just adds on the extra background. You can see in the background here, she's got like a display cabinet or a couple of display cabinets full of stuff, including some Evangelion merch. Really, really do like her work. So nice. Couple of photos again. This one, I'm not entirely sure on what that this this actual suit is. It's just a bulky Gundam. I saw it and went, wait, what? I'm not entirely sure what all of these... Uh... Oh, here we go. Gundam Stormbringer. Is this like a, a full custom or what? I'm trying to figure out what these details are. So those, those arm bits look like they're from the Unicorn. Probably wrong there. The lower legs. I'm not entirely sure what these bulky sections are. It's hard to pick out these details. The 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 bits that are just either side of the chest, inside of the shoulders, I'm not so sure. Oh, there's it there's it armed up with like a rifle and a shield. Oh there we go. Custom master grade. That's probably why then. The base is the Stormbringer Master Grade. Ah, that's probably why then. I'm, I'm not familiar with it. I'm going to have to uh, look it up. Either way, the thing is, this reminds me a lot more of, uh, of like, mass building now. Like, whereas some suits from uh, from mass building, you can make them look like Gundams. This looks like a mass building, uh, or a mass builder's uh, made it primarily because of uh, the extra, like, details that look incredibly bulky that they've attached to the uh, the frame by the looks of it. Stormbringer is a P-Bandai. 
I'm going to have to look up the design because, like I said, I've, I've practically never heard about it until now. But yeah, these, these details definitely remind me of Mass Builder here. He looks like he works out every day. I know, right? I'm just wondering about these bits on the shoulder and stuff. Very bulky kit. Either way, it looks real nice. Here we go. We got um, an old Gelgu kit, 160th scale. This is by uh, Yoroko1009. This, uh, even though it's an old kit, I do like the way that this has come out. They've, they've used, I don't know whether this is metallic or whether it's just gloss, but I like the uh, the CZ on here. And then we've got the uh, the emblem on the shield and some uh, little white bits going around to uh, to accent the the edges of certain parts and we've got a close-up from the other side the weapon actually looks really good it looks like it's uh, it's got some weathering on it just a tiny bit and then again there's the other shot from uh, from the front again but yeah I, li I really like that one it's a it's a nice color scheme it's really simple you can tell it's an older kit, by the way, that it it looks in general like the mold. Like, with the, the newer stuff, it looks a little bit more proportionately accurate. A little bit more stylized, but yeah, this, this definitely looks older and a little bit bulkier. Here we go, this one. This one, here we go. I'm... This is by Seaburst seven eight one two three, and this is the the custom barber test. I don't know whether John's around for this, but uh, yeah, custom barber test with what looks like thirty five beam sabers on it. If I'm reading this right, it is an absolute mess of a suit in terms of uh, the amount of beam sabers that are on it. We got all these custom details like battle damage and everything. It's it's a really cool design. In terms of being a really big spiky boy. But yeah, it looks like a big mess. <laughs> Porcupine or sea urchin Gundam. <laughs> and by mess, I don't mean offensively to the builder. It just, when you see all those sabers tacked onto it, it's like, what the? Like, it, this looks like a, uh, it, it's smashed together with, bif with different parts. Because it looks like we got seed looking shoulders, aged torso. And then what else have we got here? I'm trying to trying to look at the legs. I'm not entirely sure what the legs are from. The knees look like the custom. They might be from a couple of build divers suits by the look of it. I, I think that one's off the diver ace. I could be completely wrong there. It looks like we might have some Jim Striker parts on the the hips. It's a, it's a bit of a mix mash. That's definitely one of those instances where somebody's taken the uh, the whole thing of Gunplay's Freedom to heart and just gone, yeah, I'm going to roll with this and see how many beam sabers I can fit on it. I just love the way you can see all of them like that. That's a, that's a really crazy design, but I love how menacing it looks. You just would not, not want to go near that thing. And the only other suit that it reminds me of is, I think it's the, the Cerevi from Double uh, O, like some of the designs for the Cerevi, where you, you see it have the uh, the extra uh, mobile suits attached to its back and its shoulders and stuff. And each one carries an individual beam saber. I'm curious to see what a fight in space would would look like with that and what it would do to Zanubis. It'd be interesting to see like if or hear if this is the final paint job or whether they're going to do another one over the top of it because it looks like some of these parts could be painted to uh, look a little bit more uniform. I'm looking here and seeing like new parts every time I look at this. It looks like double O Gundam uh, GN Drive parts there. Uh, I don't know, it's hard to make out because there's that many beam sabers in the way. This is clearly the Axia's uh, GN shield. 
The legs I'm still not sure about. All it has to do is fly forwards and everything would be dead. <laughs> I know, right? It is a cool design, though. Then here we've got uh, Pico, Pico Nam has, uh, has done a, a diorama of a, a Zaku next to a bridge. Uh, I really like this. You don't see many dioramas, or at least I've not seen that many on Twitter. But this is one where they've taken a lot of time to, to do this sort of old-fashioned bridge. The Zaku looks like he's holding it up almost. Shinju says, I'm going to have to go. It's late. I'll see you later. Thanks, Shinju. Hope you've enjoyed. So yeah, we've got this, this beaten up Zaku that looks like it's holding up this bridge. This bridge looks like it's falling apart or has fallen apart because of the center there. There's no support for it. Um, and then we've got a guy on a boat that looks like he's fishing here or something. And then a guy that's just sat on the Zaku's leg here. Overall, I really, really like how this is uh, displayed. You can see it from the other side here where we've got a guy on some steps fishing as well. Those steps go to nowhere because the way that the uh, the diorama is done. But yeah, it's it's definitely a case of the Zaku holding up the bridge to support as this uh, what looks like a mother and child are walking over it. I really do like the way we can see the weathering on the the in, inner frame here. You can see it looks rusted. You can even see it on the uh, even though it's blurred because of the uh, the way the image is. You can see the uh, the rust and were and her on the uh, external arm and that looks real nice and then we've got it's a gunpla I absolutely love Gundam's work here and uh, this looks like it's the, the MGX unicorn I could be wrong looks like he's put a gloss coat on it and spent a lot of time doing it lighting it up in uh, destroy mode oh he's even done He's even done, uh, you, I don't know whether you guys can see it here, just m m a little bit at the bottom of the page. He's done all the uh, the characters that come with it in uh, in minifig form. And then you can see uh, on the beam gatlings and stuff. And on the beam magnum, it's got a, like, almost like a burn effect from where it's been firing so much. <laughs> and then there's his dog. Oh. Really good. I love it's a gunpla. I love his YouTube channel as well. Now here we've got a good one. This one is by uh, C C F S five P C U F G eight L A A, and this is uh, an entry grade Gundam RX seventy eight two, but it's painted up to look like it's straight out the anime. Again, this is uh, this is highly stylized, but. Uh, Again, this is something that I really love when people do this kind of thing, because trying to trick your eye into uh, into thinking it's it's not like this, well, is uh, is pretty crazy. I just love how it that's it in his hand. The uh, the amount of work that's gone into that to make it look like that is crazy. It's funny because it looks almost photoshopped, but then you can see like the shadows behind it and stuff. That is, uh, that was a really crazy build. Absolutely love that. Then, uh, again, Susan X Zero. This is the, uh, the, uh, Master Grade Quanta, I think it is, that we saw before. This is more of a close up of it. You can see all those details of it. You can see more of the uh, the line work on the uh, the armor and a bit more of the shading. Oh, excuse me, got a bit of a dry throat here. You can see a bit more of the shading all over. It looks real nice. You got that cell shaded look all over. I just realized we've been going on for an hour. Jesus Christ! No wonder my throat's dry. Well, rocking bows by the look of it. This is a couple of different suits. This is like a custom Barbatos, again for John. This is mixed with the uh, armor parts of the, uh, oh, the, the giant suit that's um, running around season two of IBO with McGillis. 
Uh, I'm noticing different parts of it. I can't remember. It begins with a H. The, the name of it. But I'm seeing different parts from that. And uh, and the, the Barbatos. And then we've got what looks like a dual katana here. And then some metallic paint on it. Now we've got another Barbatos. This one looks like fourth form. I could be wrong. We got like these these missile launchers on the back of the arms here. We got looks like the the wrench mace mixed with the uh, the sword mace, and then the uh, the classic sort of armor from the uh, the original six forms here. But it's not it's not got the heels from the the fifth or sixth form by the look of it. I could be wrong though with that. It, it's a it's a set of different parts they made it look really rusted and battle damaged i actually really like that because if, if you just sat it down in like um a workshop full of metal parts and stuff it'd probably look right at home then we've got what looks like is that that's the uh mark ii with the backpack from Build Divers? Not Build Divers, sorry. Build Fighters. But it's Titans colours? That's interesting. I'm not sure about the, the head unit. The head, at least the V-fin looks different. Maybe the, the chest looks different. But yeah, it looks like... Actually, no, it's not the Mark II. It's a, uh, it's a Blue Destiny unit. You can tell because the the legs and the torso a little bit more. I'm completely wrong there. I'll just say that and G-Dash has just corrected me as well. Yeah, it's... Nah, the chest isn't the easy 8 The chest is one of the, the BD units because you can see the Vulcans either side and then the missile launchers underneath. These legs are definitely from the BD units 1 through 3. The arms, I'm not too sure on. They're probably from the same BD unit. But there's a custom part of the front there by the looks of it. And the, the V fin looks like it's custom as well, because that looks more like the like a strike looking V fin. And it's got another cl more classic V fin behind it. Interesting. I like that though. I like the Titans colours on it. It looks menacing with the dual beam sabers. And then we've got a uh, a very sort of worn SD uh Astray red frame here. This one's the uh, the classic first uh, red frame because of the uh, the individual separated parts here. I don't think it looks like the EX standard because the EX standard has a sharper looking head unit. The classic SD apparently has better articulation and overall better parts separation. Really do like the way this looks like it's been aged like mad here. You can see instead of white it's got like that off color cream sort of thing going on that goes a little bit more dirty on bits like the shoulders where there's uh, been a little bit more damage or uh, wear and tear applied in the frame overall doesn't look too bad it looks like they've actually applied a, a metal coat for that you know like a metallic uh, finish on it and then maybe gone over it in gloss looks like there's been a little bit of problem with the masking though around the uh the head there because of the uh, the black looking like it's slightly gone outside of the uh, the panel line there. Either way, I, I really do like the way this looks. It's a nice collection of images that. Here we go again. This is for all common Rider fans. Was I on when you want him? This is by uh, Willow Second. A lot of people do these kind of designs. This is Kamen Rider Blade, but as a mobile suit. I think this is using X here as a base, yeah? Looks like it, because you've got the, the twin sabers there, you've got the, uh, the card belt there, and then you've got the uh, the sword, which can also have cards inputted into it, but that is a mixture of a bunch of GN swords, some legs, and uh, GN shield, but very stylized. I really do like that. I like it when uh, when people mix like the the Kamen Rider designs with Gundam because it goes so well. 
I'd love to see like somebody actually do like a custom kit or something in future like that. Then here we go. This is, I think, this is Double O Sky Purgatory, but this is based on Japanese stuff. Honestly, I thought it was like Demon Slayer, but kind of looks like it's taking a little bit of inspiration from that. But I like the the artwork on this, or rather the uh, the paint job. You got know, like that fiery color scheme that's going on. I think I've got a couple of pictures of this. Yeah, it reminds me of one of the characters from the Demon Slayer anime. This looks like it's custom at the back here. Looks like it's parts off, um, trying to remember the, uh, the mobile suit. It's, it's not coming to my mind at the moment. There's a, a Xeon mo looking mobile suit that has these, these parts on the shoulders that have like, uh, Gatlings under them. Somebody will be able to tell me in the chat. It's just not coming into my mind when I really need it right now. But the base of this is a, yeah, it's the, uh. The double O sky, really nice paint scheme. Highlighting the uh, the upper details in like white, yellow, and red to give off this flame detailing, and then everything else is in that kind of almost monotone, different grey colours to uh, to really make the rest stand out. The R Jar Jar says exam. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's uh, the R Jar Jar. Reminds me though, that's the it looks like the the shoulder parts for that have been used a couple of times to make up the uh, the back bits. The definitely looks familiar. Yeah, I really like the look of that. It looks really nice as a kit. And here we go. We got a your <laughs> Euphoria zero seven, and this is a Captain America style build. Again, using Exia. Exia is getting a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, or rather, Double O is getting a lot of love in today. So this is a uh, Captain America Exia. I like the color scheme of this. You can give him uh, what looks like a mini Mjolnir from the the last Marvel film. And even though I don't like Marvel, I just I really like the way that this looks. You've even got the uh, the Union symbol on the shield there. <laughs> They've got him throwing the shield. That's probably a custom shield, knowing uh, the builder. It have to be because of the uh, the way that the kit is. I love the way that it, the color scheme really does match. You got the the lightning effect parts there. I love the way that even the because um, it's all in red, white, and blue color scheme. I love the way the the bit around the GN drive in the center there is picked apart in uh, red and white. It really does highlight and break up everything really nicely. Is that an arm piece for the hammer? I'm not entirely sure. Like, I think it might be. It looks like it's, um, it looks like the actual head of the hammer is two, um, other, like, fetty looking, uh, sleeve sections, like the very end of the arms before you get to the, the hand section. It looks like they've filled in where the ball joint would normally go for the wrist, and then they've just cut it off at both sides and glued it together. I don't know what the handle is. Let's try and get this a close up of the handle. The handle almost looks like a lightsaber or something. Especially around the uh the base of, of it here. Really weird. I don't know how they've done that. Interesting. Uh, then, then we got more sort of uh, meme looking stuff. Normally, uh, I think this is Kuno CF9 posts a lot of. If if it's the same user that I'm thinking, I've posted a load of uh, different comedy style stuff with kids. This is uh, sort of like a a fake go style, or just fate in general style thing going on, where it looks like uh, Gilgamesh's Gate of Babylon, but it's a Leo with a bunch of fists, and then a Leo punching like crazy. And then a bunch of Leos seemingly moving real fast and leaving after images. And then we've got a... Uh, it, it, this is definitely looking like Jojo. This looks uh, like Jojo Part 3 with a stand where it looks like the, the Space Leo is a stand taken on the... Uh, I think this is the BD... BD2? BD3? I think it's BD2. Um, but yeah, th this looks like uh, Jojo Part 3. It looks like... Uh, Jotaro and Star Platinum. <laughs> I like the way this is done. 
really fun. Really fun and creative. And then we've got by uh, Evo. Evo, what looks like I-17 here. With the Moon Gundam Titans version. Metallics. Nice metallics. I love this. Love this immediately. This is the first time I've actually taken a proper look at this. Because normally I just look at the, the thumbnails uh, from a distance, obviously. Like, when they're, they're really small and just go, Ooh, looks nice. Maybe I'll check it out later. And then I share it and then look back at it later on. So this is first time seeing this up close. Love the use of metallics here. That, the, the lighting really shines off all the surfaces and brings out that, that glossy surface. It's so nice. The only other thing that I've seen that would be slightly better on this is using rainbow reflective uh, sheeting for the uh, the plates on the back. When uh, when somebody cut up pates of, uh, pieces of uh, reflective rainbow sticker tape, the same stuff that I used on my Crossbone Rogue for the uh, the backpack. Somebody, somebody cut it up and put it on the uh, the plates on the back and it just looks so good. Because that's originally where I got the idea from. But yeah, this... I love the colour scheme. I love the glossy look to it. The, the Moon Gundam itself is a really good high grade. It's got a load of details that stand out and they're only brought out even more by the lighting and the paint job on it. So, so nice. It's like, even it just stood there like that. It's really cool. And we've got... Here we go. So this is by... Uh, so you Inji Go, I think I've pronounced that probably wrong. Uh, this is the, the high new. It's a, an actual uh, drawing of the high new. Looks really, really nice. All the this line work that looks really nice and clean. You've got some really nice sort of colouring on it and uh, not too much shading. It's all done kind of similar to like anime artwork. I really do love how this looks though. Can't wait to see the uh, the high grade high new when it comes out and see uh, how good that looks as well. It just reminds me that that's coming out soon. But yeah, love this artwork. Really nice and clean. Love the way it's come out. Love the uh, the little glowing details on the the head camera and the eyes. Overall, it looks really really nice. And then again, we got more artwork. This is by El uh, Ec <laughs> a Clovilla. Five six six, I think I've pronounced that wrong. This one looks like it's either a custom or a barbato. Some design, I'm not sure. It might be completely custom. I could be wrong. I think it's a complete custom. I don't even think it's a Gundam. Somebody in the comments has put it looks like a fusion between the Barbados and the Shia Quanta. Oh, there we go. Now we got the Zuda. This is the uh, or it looks like the Zuda at least. Love the art. The, the line work for that because you can actually see it. It looks like it's painted on. Possibly in watercolours. Again, that looks really good. Especially if it... Because I swear I can see like paper texture in the background here. Doing stuff in watercolour like that is really, really nice. Let's see what else we got. Ooh, that one's a Dynamis, I think. Actually, no. I think it's Keridim. Um, oh, yeah. It's, it's Keridim... Keridim Saga by the look of the knees, but it's got extra parts on it to make it look a little bit like Batman because the the, uh, the wrist sections here. You've got missile pods. So it looks like a, a crazy custom pistol. And then we've got this this crazy set of custom armor going on that makes it look like it's got a load of uh, reactive armor. Yeah, it's, it looks like it's a mix between Keridim Saga and maybe... Um, Maybe the um, the suit that lock on pilots in the movie, it's completely gone from my head right now. It's one of those where you try and think of the name, and it's like, wait, what? What? It's, it's evading me again for the moment. I don't know why. Zabania. There we go. Thank you very much, Devasia. Then we've got this is a mix between uh, Votoms and Waddles here. This is by. Uh, V-M-O-A-V I, I really like this this custom because it looks pretty accurate for 
like a, a, a Waddles camouflage as a Votoms unit. It's like they've even uh, cut up the insides, you can see there too, right, to kind of fit a, uh, a pilot in it. I do love how cute that looks. <laughs> they've obviously done a, a custom head section here to, uh, to fit on this set of uh, special uh, lenses that fit on the head unit. And then the, uh, the side with the antenna on. The rest of it doesn't look too much different to normal waddles. It's just a custom paint job. The only thing that really looks a little bit different is the extra stuff that's stuck on the feet. Don't think there's a uh, custom backpack. No, it's the, the standard one. So yeah, just a little bit of uh, decal work here and there overall. <laughs> Again, I really like stuff like this because it's a nice reference. And then again, we've got some Among Us stuff. In this case, it's... Uh, oh, crap. I'm going to have to back out there a little bit. In this case, it's uh, by Zexus Triple Zero, and this is Crossbone. So, here we've got the, the Crossbone, the X2, X3, Full Cloth, and the Phantom, I believe? Again, this looks like really nice artwork. It'd be funny to actually see that in-game. We can dream. We can dream. And we've got... Uh, Kenyo4415, probably pronounced that wrong again, but I love the, how this is... It looks like a custom suit based on a squid. I'm trying to think. It, um, I think this entire top section is custom. It could be wrong. Excuse me, could be wrong. But it looks like the... Um, the arms are probably from one of the other aquatic mobile suits. I, I like the paintwork because not only have you got the weathering on it to make it look a little bit like it's underwater or making it look like it's got some camouflage on it, but you've uh, you've also got the weathering on it and stuff like that. It's it's really cool. Reminds me of a submarine. And then we've got the backpack, which I think that's off waddles. I could be wrong. There are little bits off different suits here that I'm noticing. You've got a, a bunch of different um, detailed parts around the base of it here. The whole looks like a Zagok. Oh yeah, the... Um, that bit. It looks like it might be a mix of a bunch of aquatic suits. It does look really nice though. I really like that. I like the idea that they've probably turned around and gone, you know what, I, I want to make a suit that looks like a squid, so we'll just take all the aquatic suits, because they already look a little bit weird, and we'll try mashing them together. And overall, I really like this. This could go for... This could easily trick me in, if somebody turned around in future and went, yeah, this is going to be in like one of the other series. Like Whether it be a build series or whether you, you see stuff, it could easily easily trick me and be like yeah this is a suit this is an official suit design because it, it wouldn't surprise me with the how weird the uh, the aquatic suits look and then this is another sort of meme style one this is by uh, kuno cf9 this is the uh what looks like the regazi i think and uh, a jagan and <laughs> they're playing ball with the uh the freaking escape pod that shah has <laughs> There we go. So he throws it to him, goes to uh, catch it, misses, goes into the uh, the Sazabi's head unit, and then the Sazabi's like, you two stop messing around, and then goes to punch him. <laughs> Those crazy kids. I do love stuff like that. Like I said before, it's always funny seeing, um, seeing people do really comedic sketches with the mobile suits. And then here we go, here we go. This is by Black5777.5 again. This was the uh, the one that I was on about the last time in the, the first video where I said uh, it's going to be crazy when I get to show you guys a little bit more of these details. But this is the uh, the custom high new that I saw. And there's so much detail that is in this one suit. You can only just see little bits here and there. But um, definitely go check out Black. 5777.5's uh, Twitter account. I was going to say channel then. Go check out the Twitter account because you get to see more close-ups and you get to really appreciate 
the massive amount of detail and like the behind the legs that you don't actually get to see here and under the feet all this this little detailing work that you see that's in everything else it is on every surface on the entire kit and it is absolute madness when you get to see all the other surfaces the only bit that it isn't properly on in that much detail is the back of the shield here when you look at it but with all these like custom vents and things like that and extra bits of armor that have been fitted onto us it is absolute insanity it's like one of the most detailed kits that i've, I've seen in terms of like a custom job even though uh, it's not totally to my fancy with just how much detail there is there i do appreciate like all the the work that's gone into this it is a uh, absolute madness but it's it's a sight to behold and then of course uh for people who are familiar with the uh, the Zaku F2000 from Beginning G, you get to see parts on an e here. This is by uh, S. Yeba Runzo8989. I think I've, I've probably pronounced that wrong again. But yeah, this is an e I think it's an e e now to e Schneid. With what looks like one of the IBO weapons, the, uh, the giant sword from that mobile suit that I was trying to reference before. And then it's got the Vizaku F2000's main torso with its uh, its extra missiles and things on it. It actually doesn't look too bad, to be honest. Then you've got the um, the extra armor on the legs here and the uh, the missile parts. Overall, it's a really bulky version of the E3. It's almost like a full armor version. <laughs> yeah, I really, uh, I really like the way that this looks. It, it, if they painted it up, like, I'm going to have to keep an eye on this uh, Twitter, because uh, if they painted it up so it all looks uniform, you'd, you'd trick me easily into thinking that that was an actual, like, official thing, you know, rather than just being a custom. Then here, this is by uh, Simone Sin, I think. This is a before and after of a kit. This is a, I think this is a kit batch of uh, a bunch of different kits together. And what we end up getting is this this cool uh, looking suit. It's a mixture of what looks like a camphor, the Julia from IBO, the Double O Sky. It looks like an arm section of the Astaroth. Um, trying to look what else here. It looks like the Core Gundam. Um, try to see what else is here. Uh, lower lower leg sections here look really. I can't quite place them. Those, I think, are the Julia. On the final one, they're from the Julia, but in the, uh, the before image, they're, they're definitely the, uh, like one of the double O suits. With the X here, I think. And then you've got this, this extended GM drive on the, the back of the arm, by the looks of it. It looks like the base of it was the, uh, the Quanta? Is it the Quanta or the, the double O gun then? Maybe? I think it looks more like the Quanta. But yeah, they've definitely changed it up a little bit, unless it's a completely separate suit. Like, maybe this is one design and this is the other. Either way, they both look pretty crazy and pretty nice with the silhouette and everything. Anubis says, dinner time later, everyone. See you later, Anubis! Now I want to see a Dom full armor, says G Dash. <laughs> here we've got somebody trying to make what looks like the phantom from uh, crossbone looks like they're trying to do it as a custom honestly I wish they'd just make a high grade just make me more co uh, crossbone high grades please I'll buy them I like the uh, the attention to detail on the uh, the torso here because the, the phantom's design is a little bit more weirder than the uh, the average crossbone so it's going to take a lot more time and effort to get all these details right let me keep an eye on this one because at the moment you can see them trying to do the extra details in like plot plate and things it's going to be interesting to see how this one comes out there's only one image of it as well and this is by uh teichi 7 teichi 3 i'll just show that on screen now Always like making sure I uh, at least say the username or show it here so you actually give proper credit to people. Uh, 
Susan here, X Zero again. Absolutely love her work. I've said it before, I'll say it again. This is X here looking like it's straight out of the anime. Or even straight out of like a comic book or something. You can see they've got this uh, cutting board, even looks like it's being ripped apart and it's almost like space. They've got the, uh, the GN swords that look like they're embedded in it. And then the the cell shaded artwork that looks fantastic for I think this might be the master grade X here. Exram says I fear the Phantom High Grade would be P Bandai. Oh yeah, it will be. If it ever comes out, it'd be P Bandai. The nasty like that. <laughs> Then we've got another one for John. This is Rockin' Bows again. And this is the, the same suits from before, it looks like, but with some more weathering and stuff done. This is uh, that Barbatos that we saw before. You can see a little bit more of the detail this way. It's still an amalgamation of different suits, but it's definitely the Lupus Rex, just uh, a bit more stylized. And then again, we got another close-up of the... Uh, what looks like the... Uh, the original Barbatos here, but we can see there's more detailing on it in plot plate. It looks like it's using metallics. And that's how it gives off that rusted look. And this is a completely new one that we didn't see before. This is... Ooh. Let's see here. This is the Age... Age 1 Titus mixed with... What looks like one of the... Uh, the Grunt suits, like the GNX from... Double O? Or it could be Ogre's... One of Ogre's mobile suits from... Uh, Build Divers or Build Divers Re-Rise? And then it's done in like this this gold and, and dark grey colour scheme. The V-fin is, is really weird because it's in what looks like... Clear orange? What? I don't think I've seen a V-fin in clear orange before. The only one that I could think of would be the Wings. What was it? The the Wing Gundam or Wing Zero Hono, I think. The high grade for that, but I don't even know if that if it has a V fin that's in clear orange. That's weird. Is the head from the Raphael? Actually, it looks like it is from the Raphael. Now that you mention it, I don't know whether that's painted or whether it's clear now. That's really annoying. It's 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 plain. It's playing tricks with my eyes. Like, can you guys, like, figure out on your end whether that's see-through or not? Because I, I can't make it my mind up whether it's see-through or whether it's painted. It's blowing my mind here. Fluorescent paint, maybe? Maybe? See, it could just be me, and it could be a clear coat on top of the base layer, because the base layer looks like it has this kind of um, weathering effect on it, you know, like the rest of it does, to make it look like it's metal. But then it's it's orange over the top, which is why it was fooling me, because I thought it was the or the clear orange showing the, uh, the head behind it. You know. Could we have clear resin cast? Possibly? It's, it's really strange. Like I said, it... it it could be just clear coat over weathering to make it look like that. It's interesting. Really interesting by Rocking Bows again. And here we go. Clap Fake has done uh, Barbatos again. I think this is the full mechanics by the look of it. This was for the, uh, what was it? Gunpla Builders World Cup 2017, I think. Here is another one for John. This looks real nice at the moment. The shoulders are standing out a little bit more. The shoulder armor it looks a little bit more like samurai shoulder pads. Oh, okay, so that's the um, that's the uh, extra set of armor that we got from the uh, the booster that they had in IBO that only appeared in like two or three episodes. I like the design of that booster, but it was hardly ever used, even though it was like really pointy. I like the way they got the mace on the back there, that looks really cool. Those are some big hands. <laughs> yeah, the, the booster was uh, a neat idea, but it hardly 
hardly did anything apart from explode, I don't remember rightly. You have to look into that again. Again, it's that whole thing with gold. I really like gold. Not so much on the uh, the blade there, but definitely on the the V fin and the extra bits like the trim and the vents. It looks pretty nice. Really liking that. I think that's fourth. Is that fourth form shoulders with, if I remember rightly, it's fifth or sixth form feet. I think this might be a mix. It looks like the Barbatos is wearing Barbatos armor. It looks almost like they're using... Uh... Oh, wait a minute. It's the high grade mixed with the full mechanics. I'm just looking at the... Um... I'm just looking at more at the uh, the comments now. See if that makes sense. Some parts of the armor that look more enlarged from the, the full mechanics. And the, the main base of it is the, the high grade, which is why certain sections look smaller. Okay, okay, that makes more sense now. That's interesting, that. Like, stylistically, it's it's interesting to see the exaggerated features, like the lower legs. You can see a massive now compared to the upper thighs. Like, the, the, the body itself, just this section here, is so much tinier compared to everything else. Stylistically, it's a really weird choice. But it's, uh, it's definitely interesting to look at, and it... Love the way around the back. You can see how it, the the legs are pinned in. Interesting. This is by uh, Gumball Photography again by uh, Duran's Barbin. This oh, this is a uh, looks like a, uh, a purple uh, a purple jester with custom parts on it. I think for its shoulders. That's some crazy color in there, but I actually really like the uh, the color scheme. It's um, its color scheme kind of reminds me of one of the other suits from Unicorn, uh, the the Rosen Zulu, I think. Could be wrong about that. But it, the uh, the light sort of pink on the 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 like smaller sections here, like the the individual bits that would uh, join onto the main section, just picking out all the details from the uh, the darker purples and stuff really really makes it look like a really nice color scheme i'm just not sure what these shoulders are these shoulders i think might be extra like parts from uh, an, an add-on kit or something oh you can see around the back it's around the back it doesn't thrust the bells in gold on the interior okay that's pretty neat, and then we've got like, what is it? Are those magazines for the uh, the rifle there? Yeah, they are. I like the way we've got this little detail for the Anaheim Electronics thing here, and they've got the ESF logo, but I swear they've got the, the sleeves. Is it their sleeves logos? I, I could be wrong, I think that's a Fetty logo. I just want to know what this, this shoulder section is, because it's got like missile pods all over it and stuff. It's uh. It's really interesting. Overall, it doesn't need weathering on it. It's a really nice, again, clean color scheme. It's come out really well. When just looking at it now, I can't see any imperfections in it. It just looks so, so damn nice. Put it on a shelf or put it in a display cabinet, show it off to people. Nice effort and work that's gone into this. Absolutely adore stuff like this. Like, even the little bits that are picked out in yellow, because yellow contrasts well against purple. So nice as a colour scheme. Here we go. The... <laughs> I've got to pronounce this properly. This is more artwork. This is the... Zajirno, I think? By the look of it, this is more 8th team artwork. This is the uh, the ground Gundam. We've got the ground Gundam kneeling in the snow, then out in the snow with its lamps on its shoulders, and then just the ground Gundam looking down here, and then the ground Gundam wading through some water in the bottom or an ocean, but you can't quite see it too well because of the way it's cut off. But um, yeah, I really like this. This is a, a winter theme for the end of uh, twenty twenty. They've made it feel a little bit more like a, a workhorse mobile suit as they've put in the uh, the comments here. 
I absolutely love. I, I would have loved to see because uh, I can't remember a theme really well, but I don't think they had like any episodes that were in winter. Love to see how that would affect the the mobile suits, you know, like whether they'd be slipping around on ice or whatever. And I absolutely love this one with the shoulder lamps on it. It looks so cool. Just imagine like it's a a dark winter's evening and you have to go out on patrol and you're just having to carry shoulder lamps around and you can't really see much in front of you and there's just wind and uh, and snow all over the place. And it's obs ex uh, obscuring your vision. <laughs> Could hardly say that. There was a tongue twister. Uh, it's a really nice one. It's really atmospheric. I like that. Really good artwork. And here we've got from uh, Raven's Nest 8525. This is the Visago 1 to 100 scale. But this is done in what looks like double X colours? Or just Fetty colours? It's, it's weird seeing the Visago, because the Visago reminds me a lot of the Epion. It's almost like they took the Epion and made the Visago, uh, and, and took the Visago design and made it into the Epion, because it shares similar sort of uh, silhouette, and it shares similar design traits. You've got like the carry over the big shoulders, the, the pointy bits all over the armor, the head looks kind of the same, and it's got those wing looking things on the back. The only thing that's different, obviously, is the Visago has the. Uh, the weird stomach laser and the uh, the extendo arms. Uh, but it's it's neat seeing it in like classic colors similar to the DX compared to the uh, the Epion style color scheme that it has, where it's like dark red if I remember rightly, and uh, different colors that contrast with red, like orange and stuff. Also, like the way the the back of the wings, there you've got that gold painted on them, but you can clearly see the. Um, the panel lines in them. It's not as if the panel lines are just full of gold. They've actually gone in and what looks like with the panel liner and uh, and then gone across it with some uh, some alcohol based rub to get rid of all the the stuff afterwards. I love panel lines that look really clean. Really do. Really nice. There's nothing worse than bad panel lines that, that make a, a suit look absolutely terrible. And then here we've we've got um, Masaki, yeah, Masaki Sei has uh, done Thunderbolt suit, but this is more of a diorama piece. This is one of the the Thunderbolt gyms, but it's being blown up by beam fire, which we can kind of see in the the first episode of Thunderbolt. I love the way we get to see it actually uh, in pieces. Here, so you can see the torso is completely separate from like the lower portions of the legs. There's no pelvis section. The shields have been blown off. The arms have been blown off. The uh, the weapons are completely bent here. It's uh, it's pretty interesting seeing all this this like effects done on in uh, the paintwork. They've clearly just like ripped off sections of the model and then melted them down. But I love how they've uh, they've done this. It just looks really really nice, and the effect looks really good when you're seeing it from like this angle where they've got the entire piece set up. You got like debris floating around. You got the the explosion effect. This is one of the uh, the more interesting uh, ones we've come across today because we've we've gone over a load of stuff. We're getting towards the end, but we've gone over a load of different things. Stuff that looks like it's straight out of like the anime or straight out of a comic strip. You got other stuff that looks like it's. Uh, uh, straight out of the line art but it's actually in 3d you've got some really nice artwork some cell shaded stuff a load of different kits that look really nice and clean or i've got some nice weathering on a couple of different dioramas that are set up but this one this one's interesting because of the amount of effort that's obviously gone into the effect just in general to make it look as if it's exploding absolutely love that how the uh the generator seems to have ruptured from the explosion. It's gone straight through the shields and melted everything. It's, it just looks so good. Really, really good. Absolutely enjoy that. Here we've got a more simple thing here. I think this is the perfect grade. I'm not too sure, but this is by Luna Tantamen, I think. I've pronounced that properly, I hope. And this, this is a more simple picture. This is literally what looks like the perfect grade with the lights on. But it's in the dark, so it's just illuminating the, the head camera and the eyes. And I don't know what it is about this. It's it's so simple, but it's so cool just to see the, uh, the eyes lit up and everything at night. It's really, really neat. I love that photo. 
especially because you can see the eyes are just about giving out enough light to uh, highlight bits of the collar on the Gundam as well. And then another one by Gunpla Photos. This one's a, a custom RX-78, but it's done with different sort of Japanese-looking artwork all over it. Again, links to the artist's page and stuff. You can easily go on Gunpla Photography's uh, Twitter account and find the artist on there. Because they've got a, uh, an Instagram, and then it's in the, the comments section. You can see all this traditional Japanese art, or at least it looks like traditional Japanese art almost like watercolour with uh, some uh, I think it's either kanji yeah kanji or uh, hiragana there overall that looks really nice though it's like I like the uh, the extra bits on the rest looks pretty simple and clean with a little bit of like airbrushing shading on it but I love it. it looks like Mount Fuji on the shoulder there I do like that though it's it's nice and it stands out against everything else not so sure on the colours, you know, the, the purple and the pink here, but I mean, that's totally down to uh, the the builder and the preference. I think they've deliberately done that to make everything else stand out. And then here we go, we got the, the Master Grade Forever Gundam. This is by uh, Naokithi0605. I don't think we ever got a Master Grade of this, although I could be wrong. This, this is probably a custom. This is from uh, Beginning G. Love this. And this is a really nice design for the RX-78, just having it almost like a full armor variant. I think that's what the idea was for in uh, Beginning G. Thanks for sticking around, Drift. I'll see you later, Ram. There's only a high grade of the... Uh, the, the uh, Forever Gundam. Okay, so this is definitely a load of custom work then. I wonder if they've taken like the, uh, the Thunderbolt stuff and used bits of that to, to make this. Either way, this looks really cool. Again, it's nice and clean. Love seeing all these panel lines and extra details. So damn good. And then we've got uh, Gunpla Photography again. This is the model is by Brian Packhart. I think I pronounced that right. This is what looks like an edited uh, photograph of the Chimaris and the Bile fighting each other. It looks like uh, from season two, but they've they've clearly it looks like they've clearly photoshopped it. It could be wrong, given the uh, the way that everything else has gone today. You know, with the uh, the different cell shadings and other stuff. It could actually be uh, two kits that are, are done up like this, and I find out you can actually just pick them out and uh, they look like that in hand. But I do like the way that these these look like high grades that have been posed in a similar fashion to the uh, the actual show, and then they've just been edited over. The end of season two, the the uh, the just Gundam Kamaris in its final form versus Bile. Either way, I really like that shot. Really nice. Getting to the end now, I got about ooh, about 10, 10 or so images left. This is artwork for the Night Gundam. The I think this is full armor Night Gundam by uh, uh, Haguma Karasu. Artwork looks so clean, so nice. It, all the shading and effort that's gone into this, absolutely love it. And then we've got it with effect parts or, you know, with just general flame effects. Love the, uh, the stance. Uh, again, I, I love the Night Gundam from uh, Dynasty Warriors 3. I still keep trying to get my hands on this, the SD of this, but it's so hard to get because every time I try and get it, it's sold out. But yeah, love the artwork. It's super clean. Reminds me of like a, a, a really, really high quality comic book image. So nice. Really love this. If you like any of this stuff so far, be sure to check out the actual uh, original creators' accounts and stuff. Again, here we go. We've got Hayana Hobby. This is a, a custom Barbados by the look of it. Again, for John. Uh, don't know about the shoulders, but the the base looks like it's the Lupus Rex. We've got what looks like the, the sword mace here. We've got 
these binder looking things that looks like they're made out of the arms of the lupus rex and the the shoulder armor for the re-rise lord astray rebake um this looks like the the original barbatos or barbatos lupus's arms with the cannons on and then the the side skirts here i'm not entirely sure what the side skirts are from the the front skirts they, they look like they're from another one of the ibo suits uh, it might be the hajiro boshi i'm not sure the lower leg sections of the kimaris mixed with i think that might be the sixth form or the lupus and then um, the lower the, the, they've got like other sections on the the lower parts of the legs to try and fill this out that look a little bit more bulky and, and look a little bit more like it might be off a graze or something or i could be completely wrong on that and it's i, I don't know this is really weird the hajira boshi says eggs ram yeah the i just realized now the 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 thigh sections the thigh armor or the uh, the bits that are on the side the the bits from the hajira boshi so the the shoulders are going to be from the hajira boshi as well by the looks of it because they're the the big standout thing there that's crazy so they're trying to mix what looks like maybe three or four different kits together there to to kind of kit bash it and give it this nice crazy silhouette barbatos with wings basically it's a interesting build. I want to see how that one comes out. Let's see if they said anything in the comments here. No, they haven't. Okay, I really like that. I just want to see how that turns out. It's like a, a custom paint job or whatever. And here we go. By uh, FN Goroge Mark II, I think this is. I'll probably pronounce this wrong, but this is a custom for the, uh, the crossbone. This is this looks like the high grade full cloth from Build Divers. Not Build Divers, sorry, Build Fighters Try. And then they've they've made this big anchor looking weapon along the back of it that looks really, really nice and intimidating. And fits with the crossbone theme. And then it looks like it's got a pile driver at the end. And this looks like it splits apart and makes like scissors or something. And then it's missing one of its uh, lower arm it's like beam daggers I think it's got some I think they're like fuel tanks on this side and then it's got a different color scheme it's white and then they've picked apart different sections with like decals and stuff I really like this as a custom the the way that they've painted it up is simple but it works really well with the crossbow and aesthetic they've taken off the skulls by the look of it and added some uh, some custom parts here and there especially with the the anchor looking thing but i i absolutely love this it looks so good i could see this being an actual proper design you know like especially with the anchor thing i could see them actually making that into a uh, a proper design if it's not based off something already that anchor looks like a dying slave <laughs> no no don't remind me of the ending of ibo <laughs> freaking dying slaves man here we go, Gunpla Photography again. This is by uh, Out uh, yeah, Dragon Studio. And this is a GNX that's done with more detail in it. So you can see on the, the thighs here, we've got like extra detail running down. The paint job looks like it's a, a mixture of two or three different colors, or like different shades of this blue color, which look real nice. I'm just looking at the decal work and everything. We've got small decals all over the place. Thruster bells are done in gold. Overall, again, this thing looks so clean. Like, this is consistent with quite a lot of the images today. The The overall build and paint job just looks so clean and nice. The, the finished product looks so damn good. Absolutely love this. Really do. Really, really do love just how striking this looks in terms of the fact that I can't really see any imperfections. And straight out from the image it just looks so fantastic to look at again this is by Aug Dragon Studio and then we're on to the final six here by the look of it this is by 4 Reiner I think 
they, they've done uh, black and white color schemes on stuff, or at least Photoshop stuff, by the looks of it. This is Wing Zero Custom from the Endless Waltz. Sort of this noir style thing going on. And then we got the, the Barbatos from before. The, uh, the black and blue one that we saw, the custom color scheme. And then that is the, uh, oh god. Somebody in chat, correct me here, it's an Astray. It's an Astray variant, but I can't remember the, the actual name for it. It's come out recently. It's an old red suit with a yellow V fin. And it's got a giant claw arm thing that's also a shield, if I remember rightly. Testament, that was it, that was it. Thank you guys very much. Thank you very much. Oh, that moment where I can't remember stuff off the top of my head, it just eludes me and I'm just like, come on guys, help, help, help. Oh, thank you very much. But yeah, that's the testament. That, is that a Master Grade? I think, I think it's a, a Master Grade. I don't think they made a high grade of it. I could be wrong, somebody tr correct me in the comments. Otherwise, I'm just talking out my ass here. But yeah, I do love the uh, sort of like black and white vibe they're going for here. It looks real nice. So this film noir style. Yeah, it's the Master Grade. Thought it was. I just, you know, if I'm wrong, then I want to be corrected. This is by Modachan on Steam. This is somebody who's uh, looking like they're just modding games. I'm not sure what else they're into, but they've they've taken the unicorn and seemingly modded it into freaking D uh, Demon X Machina. <laughs> I, I don't even I don't even know how that's possible. I'm assuming it's the Steam version, but they've put they've put a custom model for the uh, the unicorn destroy mode in Demon X Machina. That's crazy. They've even got the um the V fin glowing there. That is cool, but you can see like custom parts in the background from Demon X Machina. That is that is really nice. Absolutely love that. That came across my uh my desk today and I was just like I've got to show this off because it's not often that I cover stuff like Demon X Machina but this this was really big and stand out for me because I've never seen anything like this where it's custom stuff put in game uh, Full Rider again has showed us some other suits here we've got this is this is from Sea Destiny this is the Force Impulse I think but it's 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 actually a custom, but hang on. There's nothing to do if you match the colours, says Fall Rider. So I think he's done this deliberately. It's using different parts from different suits. Because this looks like the, the Freedom, or the Strike Freedom's legs. I think it might be the Freedom's. Will you finally play that game now, says John? No. No. <laughs> Force Impulse has the swords. Uh, yeah, yeah. The the thing is, the reason why I was saying that is because the red color scheme is just missing the swords. So it's just a, what, a custom impulse? Because it looks like it's not even painted up properly or anything like that, which is why they made the comment on it. I'm just trying to have a look because it's, it's got like strike looking side skirts. I'm not too... I, I'm not too familiar with see Destiny suits. I'm seeing like little bits of like an astray here. This looks like the back of an astray's elbows for for this shoulder section. Uh, not shoulder for the wrist section here. This bit looks like an astray red frame or blue frame shoulders. It's red frame because I can see the inner frame poking out the back. The head unit looks like the impulse. I think this is clearly the the force impulse torso. Uh, I don't know whether that's the, the Ale Strike backpack or not. Like I said before, this looks like the Freedom's legs. But they don't match up at the back because the colour's different. It's it's really weird. Really weird, that one. I'm assuming that's going to get coloured in at a different point and it'll all match up. Maybe they've just done that to add extra details. You can see the red frame is missing your shoulders in the background. Ah, nice one, Eggs Ram. I didn't actually, I didn't actually notice it. I saw the red frame in the background, but they've probably just you know taken bits and pieces off it and put it on the uh, the custom suit in the foreground. Shows how much attention I'm paying to everything here. I'm looking at everything in the foreground and not the the stuff that's in the background. 
It looks almost like they've got a load of candy in the background here as well. It could just be me, but it looks like a load of like lollipops or something. <laughs> I don't even... I don't know. It's a weird one. There's a little bit of a mixed matching of parts going on here. Oh, that's why I think... Is that the final version of it? If it is, then they change the... The legs a little bit? Huh. What's that? They've got shown the rifle on that one, so... Yeah, that's the... Uh, is that the Justice legs? Looks like the Justice's legs. Either Justice or Infinite Justice. That rifle's completely different to the standard one. That's the, the anti-ship sword. It's the same backpack. Overall, same sort of thing going on. They've changed the wrist armor there. Damn good legs, that's all I know. <laughs> Then here we've got what looks like a um, a custom thing going on with the uh, Zabanya and the Keridim Saga. It looks like they've taken stuff off the Keridim Saga and planted it straight onto the Zabanya. So the Zabanya now has the the GN assault rifle on the side here. It, well, two of them. Then it has uh, what looks like extra GN shield bits there. we got pistols on the, the side here. And then we've got the uh, beam uh, the GN SMGs coming off the knees here, which have been, clearly been taken off the the Keridim Saga, and the Keridim Saga has been given a solid bazooka by the look of it, and its shoulder shield has been moved to its arm. Okay, that's interesting. I do like the look of that Zabanya. Oh, oh, okay, okay. So this is the before and after. So this is the the Ker the Keridim Saga that it's got sort of this solid shell setup looks a little bit less bulky now because of all the stuff's been taken off it and the Zabania looks like it's a freaking beast even more than it did before like for, for anyone that's seen the, the video that I did before about the Zabania and how crazy it is this is just going even more crazy with it it's like so so what do you do well we take a mobile suit that can basically snipe anything from any range at rapid rates and uh, yeah then we give it more weapons just for the sake of it we, we give it another two uh, assault rifle type weapons and another two SMGs and uh, we still give it all the missile pods and we still give it all the, the shield bits and the rifle bits so it, it, it ends up with way more darker than it should meanwhile the Keridim's over here like how can I only get a solid bazooka and a freaking tiny shield <laughs> oh. XRAM says does it have the high new rifle I I think it does have, it's either the high new rifle, actually yeah, I think it is the high new rifle because of, uh, of the back of it. Never enough darker. Yeah, it never is with this suit. Like Zabanya is just ridiculous when it comes to darker. Here we go, we're, we're reaching the end now, we're on the last four. So this is, uh, this is a custom uh, cross silhouette ground Gundam with you can see along the base here, it's got some wiring going in. And this is just a, uh, a test shot. And then they've done it in color later on. And I like this style because it's not, it's not all cross silhouette. It looks like they've mixed it with the high grade. Because uh, the shoulders look bigger. The backpack looks way bigger. The head looks like the normal SD head. But the torso looks really tiny. And then everything else looks <laughs> ridiculously proportioned. But at the same time, it still looks cute. I absolutely love the uh, the contrast in proportions. And then this looks like a full custom again. This looks like it's using the core Gundam as a base. And then we've got bits of the... Looks like the Mars armor. The Wing Zero TV version. The Destiny. Uh, the Eurovan armor. And I'm trying to look at what else we got here. Jesus. Here's the pointy boy. Oh, oh, okay, okay. So we've got we've got black and gold for the, the final look, and then it's accented with... Wait a minute. <laughs> it's accented with blue, but where did the heat rod and the freaking Endless Waltz Wing Zero wings come from? Were they just added on afterwards? Yeah, they were. It's got a heat rod going on here. Actually, that's not a heat rod. That's the... um. That's from Build Divers, the... um. 
ogre's team, the his little brother, the the one that makes problems for the the build divers originally. He's a pain in the ass. He has a uh, suit from an enemy suit from Gundam Age that's blue. It's the tail of that. And then and then you've got the twin buster rifle from Wing, the TV series. And then you've got the wings that I was on about before. It's just got more wings, so it's got endless waltz custom wings. See des uh, yeah destiny Gundam wings and then Wing Zero TV wings, <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh my God! Very backpack. Seriously, I, I'm surprised this thing can stand up. It is that heavy. It's probably using the destiny wings to prop itself up at the back. Slams fist on the table. More wings, more. <laughs> I gotta admit though. Even though I, I rip on uh, some people in video games, you know, for doing the black and and red sort of color scheme and saying it's edgy, you know, as a joke for you know like Shadow the Hedgehog or whatever. Um, I do like this black and gold color scheme with the accents of blue. It looks really, really nice in kit format. It looks also like it's not gloss. It looks more matte than anything else. So, uh, looks really, really nice. I don't know whether the gold is gloss or not, but the, the black definitely looks like a matte. It's a 10 out of 10 custom. I, I, I really love this one. Somebody's just gone all in and gone, you know what, I want a very spiky boy, and uh, he's going to look really cool. You know, this is by uh, uh, Dark AFNW. I'm just going to uh, pull up the, uh, the page here so I can show him off the... Make sure if you if you like that you check out the actual image because uh, I don't want to just be uh, guilty of not promoting these people because so good like all this artwork you know got to give shout outs to people. This is a funny one that I saw before. This is by Chris Novus. <laughs> this is a, this is a edit of um, it, and this is a hero doing his usual "I'll kill you" and duos looking down at the. Uh, at the sewers and be like, yeah, I think I'm going to avoid that. <laughs> I might have to post that on Discord later because I just love wing memes like that. It just looks so funny. I need somebody to edit that, like, into actual footage. But yeah, again, it's... it's Because it's this week in Gundam, it's all stuff that was randomly tweeted and I just saw that and was like, I've got to have this. <laughs> oh... So funny. But yeah, this is by Chris Novus. And we're getting to the last ones here. So this is uh there's two left. And this is the uh more gunpla photography again. Modeler is G painted Senyo. And uh this is the the judgment, I think it, it was called. I, I covered it in the first episode and said that it looked crazy because of the um the silhouette and the design of the parts it looked really unique and i'd never seen anything else like it the color scheme i like the way that they've done dark blue contrasting with mostly white it just works so nicely and bits of it look a little bit and remind me a little bit like the ashtray those cannons remind me of something from seed these legs remind me a little bit of like the new mixed with like the the skirts here look like the they're from the Sananju or something, the Sananju Stein. That head looks like it's from freaking Astray. Like I said, the legs look like they're from the new or the Freedom. The arms remind me a lot of like Wing Zero Custom from the Endless Waltz. The these can shoulder cannon things definitely remind me of like Strike Freedom or Freedom because of the uh, the grey sort of railgun style thing with the tip on the end. And then it's got these these crazy sort of. Uh, Almost like Sananju beam weapons here. The not forbidden, says Devasia. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I'm really loving this one. It looks like a really nice kit. I think it's a third party one from what I remember saying in the first episode. But it's, the overall color scheme and design looks so damn nice on this thing. It's overall silhouette and just look is really appealing. Like how, whoever made this and then made it into kit form did a really good job because it looks so damn good. Really, like stylistically, it's just really, really nice to look at. 
lots of sharp edges all over it and different details that break up the panel lines. You've got loads of little vents all over the place here. They don't really show the backpack off too much, but they're, they're just little hints that I can pick up on from like different or inspiration from different suits. It's a uh, overall a really nice design. And then the last one we've got here is uh, a custom one by uh, oh god, trying to pronounce the name. I'll just say Eternal Blue here. The uh, the actual handle is uh, Co Agassi Solito, I think. I've pronounced that. I've probably done it wrong. Um, again, I've probably butchered everybody's name in this video. But here we got to the last one. This is the uh, the Astray Double Rebake painted up like Ava Unit Two. I really do like this. This is one of the uh, the ones that that convinced me to do the. Uh, this is a stream instead of a video today. I just love how this looks because the the. Lord Astray Rebake is just a really weird design, and I like the way that it actually works really well in Unit 2's paint job. It's uh, it's definitely more fitting, I think, than its original paint job from the actual uh, Re-Rise anime. Love the way they've given it, well, they've, they've painted the claws in like grey here to uh, to replace the the knives that they have normally the the physical blades for the Ava units they've changed the head around here nailed those reds it just it looks really nice especially like with this one this reminds me of the freaking uh, episode where they introduce Asuka and Ava unit 2 in Evangelion and they have the uh, the unit stood on top of the uh, the fleet of ships as it's jumping across them to fight the angel Especially because of the uh, the cape, but it's, oh, it's just so good. The, the funny thing is, a lot of people think that customs, you just have to go out of your way and, and throw as many custom parts on and make complete custom parts to uh, to make a good custom. But a good custom can be just a simple repaint that's done really well and either references something or just looks really damn good. You know, absolutely love this. I think there's different tones of red in here as well. Like, hang on. From here, you can see the shoulders have got a little bit of fade on the red here. It goes a little bit lighter towards the edge. It's the same with like the tops of the, the thighs, um, the edges of the the side armor here, on the, the skirt armor. The, the feet, you can't see on this shot, but the toes have got slightly lighter red on them. It looks like the, the fronts of the... Uh, the shins have got like a darker red, which gets broken up by a little bit of a lighter red overall the way that they've, they've picked out the individual colors here and how to apply them effectively over the overall frame and still get a reference out of it and it's still really good it's it's so well done because like i noticed that when i was doing custom repaints myself was that you had to be really careful with where you actually applied the colors because if you applied them incorrectly or you you didn't think about where you would apply them then it can look absolutely horrible so normally for this kind of thing what you do is you take it into photoshop and you do some like quick edits in photoshop of the original line art to kind of mix and match where you want the paint to go and kind of see where you think it looks best and then go from there good custom comes from the heart that's what the show says right the, the, the thing is, a good custom can be anything you want it to be, as long as you put enough effort in and make it look really, really damn good. Like, at the end of the day, as long as it's worth what you think you've put in in terms of time, and it it comes out how you would like it to, you know, then you've done a good custom. <laughs> this this one, finishing off with it, such a good finish. It's... Uh, like I said, it's reference is really nice. It's done really well. The only way this could be any better is literally if they tried to do something like throw cloth over the top of that to make it look actually like cloth instead of the the armor. But I think that would ruin it personally. It's like I'm just thinking of this off the top of my head and being like, okay, you know what? It could look a little bit more like cloth and then immediately I'm walking that back and being like, yeah, but if they threw cloth on it, it'd probably look terrible if they did it wrong. You <laughs> know? So at the same time as me going, oh yeah, it could look a little bit nicer. It's like, no, 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 no. Just leave it as it is. It's fine. <laughs> it's a uh, really, really weird suit design, but it really, really, really does fit the uh, the reference paint job.
Anyway, Jesus Christ, this is a long one. So th that was another week in Gundam. That was a two hours and twenty minutes stream. Hope you guys have uh, have liked all the stuff that I found on Twitter here. I uh, hope you found either a good laugh, enjoyed all the customs, liked the artwork and everything else. I'll try and eventually, uh, within either a day or so, update the description so that it has all the people in that I've featured, uh, the tags and handles in so that we can uh, make sure we credit them properly even though I've mentioned them all by name. I know I've butchered most of the names, but yeah, this has all been really good stuff. I like looking at this stuff all the time because it's good seeing what kind of creativity people have and seeing how well people can do this kind of stuff really really do enjoy looking at other people's work and just seeing how it comes out and i hope you've enjoyed it too so until next friday i shall see you then i hope you've all enjoyed and yeah remember to uh to give these guys uh, a either a like a follow or just keep an eye on the work and uh, it, if you liked it and see what you think there might be something else that they make in future that you enjoy. Anyway, until next time, thank you very much. Bye.